Welcome to this section of videos about the Context API. In this video, I will introduce state management in the Context API. The objectives of this video are to define state management in the Context API. Lastly, we will examine other options for state management. Let's start with discussing what is state management. We've seen state within our components and have seen how we set our initial state and how we can update it with this dot set state. But what about state on a larger scale? When developing applications, you'll most likely run into questions like, how do I track user interactions? Or how do I track data changes on the server based off of user interactions? What if my user logs out of their device and logs back in another? The solutions to these issues is solved by state management. The idea of state management is a common practice of web development. But this wording by Raquel Moss in her article, What is State and Why Do I Need to Manage It? is an excellent definition. She states, State management makes the state of your app tangible in the form of a data structure that you can read and write to. It makes your invisible state clearly visible for you to work with. So now we understand that state management is really just a piece of global data in our application that manages a specific type of logic. Like most problems in software development, these issues have been encountered, and there are patterns for how to solve these issues. Therefore, when following a state management pattern, you will gain a structure to handle all state-related questions, such as Define the way data should flow within your application. Also, it will clarify how inputs and outputs should be handled. If we abstract our components in a way they don't care about how data is handled, they will reflect the input given and provide outputs for our users, which will lead to more reusable code. In React, the sharing of state is pivotal. We want to avoid creating components that pass the top level state down through multiple components for display, but we'll discuss how to handle this more later. Lastly, when state is managed properly, our UI will reflect state changes right away, and it will respond to user actions efficiently, leading to an overall pleasant user experience. Let's move on to the introduction of the Context API. The React documentation states that context provides a way to pass data through the component tree without having to pass props down manually at every level. In short, since React 16.3, a stable version of context can be thought of as a built-in way to share and manage state, which means not having to pull in an external library, which could, at one point, conflict with React. State management is an imperative aspect to your application, especially in software development. So there are options other than the Context API, like Redux or MobX. We will briefly discuss these, but I encourage you to spend some time to determine what may work best for you and your application. Redux is a library which holds and updates the entire state of your application. It is a complex process that is broken down into a flow like this. In Redux, the global data structure I've referred to as state is called the store. And in Redux, this is a single object. When state needs to be manipulated, an action is called. And an action is usually an object that is returned by a pure function with no side effects. This action object will contain the type and any necessary information in order for state to be updated. You can think of actions as describing that something has happened in your application. When the action is dispatched, the Redux store will call a reducer. A reducer is a pure function that takes the current state and the action and performs an update on the state. And once that's complete, the reducer will return a whole new state. Again, this is a very high level overview of Redux. Whole courses have been written about this, so I encourage you to do your own research. Here's an idea of the Redux flow and how it will look within your application. 
the store will contain the application state, which will control the UI. UI interactions will dispatch actions, which will be sent to reducers that will update state. Redux is very popular and offers tooling in a community, and that's due to the fact that it delivers a predictable data model for your application. The structure forces a separation of data and presentation, therefore following the single responsibility principle. You are able to extend its use by adding middleware, meaning when your actions are dispatched, you can perform other operations within your application. Some of the downsides to Redux is that it is verbose. Redux also follows the reactive pattern strictly. So when adopting it, everything else in your app needs to fit as well, which can lead to higher implementation costs. Also, there is not a standard way to deal with side effects. You will need to implement another library to handle that. If you would like to know more about Redux, I recommend heading over to their website and reading through their documentation. Our next state management library is MobX. The core idea of MobX is that it maintains a consistent state, and that is done by treating the application like a spreadsheet. The MobX documentation references the state as the data cells of the application. Updates are sent to derivations, which will compute values and handle rendering. Updates will also be sent to reactions, which will handle DOM updates. Both these can be thought of as formulas for the data in the spreadsheet. The last concept we will discuss is actions, which are utilized to alter state. When reviewing the chart, you can see that the actions are the key to updating state, and each derivation and reaction have their own role as a state management solution. Some of MobX's strengths are relative to Redux being that there is less boilerplate code and you do not need to pull in a third-party library to handle side effects. MobX also plays well with the paradigm of object-oriented programming through the use of decorators and observables. Some of the concerns you need to consider when working with MobX are that there is a lot of freedom versus the Redux framework, which has strict guidelines for implementation. Earlier, I mentioned that MobX handles some of the aspects that Redux requires a third party to handle. Relying too much on MobX for these issues can lead to code that is difficult to debug. If you'd like to know more about MobX, I recommend you head over to their site and read their documentation. Some of the concerns of working with the Context API are that compared to Redux, if you would like your state code to have some form of middleware, you will need to write that yourself. Like MobX, because the React API is handling the way state is updated, it can become difficult to debug. Due to its recent release, there may not be a lot of legacy code to refer to. There are a lot of benefits that we will cover in the next video.